So different options to um, dehydrating when you do have power, I'm just gonna run through a few of them, is you, of course you have your electric dehydrators, you have your low tech, I have one that just has a, a coil at the bottom, you plug it in, the coil warms up. I used it for years up until about three years ago when I got a more advanced electric um, dehydrator from a, a local store. And so I use both of them in the spring, especially when the greens from um, net, the stinging nettles are on and you can pick a lot of them and they, they're bulky. So, so you can have extra, I run two dehydrators and also with the um, uh, dandelions when their greens are in and the flowers. So I like to have both the high tech and the low tech, they both work well. Uh, another one is you can dehydrate in the oven. You um, turn it on at slowest setting and sometimes people have said they if they have gas, they keep a pilot light on, but you do have to prop the door open. You have to have airflow. So you can use a wooden spoon to prop the door open. Um, that is an option. And then there are freeze dryers. I don't have one. They're highly expensive and they use a lot of power. But if that's the way you want to go, that's also an option. So when you're off grid, your dehydrating options, you, you can use your car and you park your car and we all know how hot it gets in the car. You can dehydrate in the car, but you need to make sure that you have airflow. So roll your windows down a little bit so that you can get some air, but you don't want bugs going into your car and landing on your food. So I am planning on having a screen of some kind, like tool or you can uh, some mesh to cover the windows to keep the bugs out and not to land on your food. When you're de dehydrating in the car, you can dehydrate uh, herbs and things and they're more delicate so you never want them in direct sunlight you put them in a paper bag that um, keeps the light off and also it can it has airflow and then you would that's how you would dehydrate um, your more delicate herbs and greens there's um, solar I have a friend who said when she was growing up, living in Oregon, they used to um, ha dehydrate, well, I shouldn't say solar, I should say the sun. They used to dehydrate on their shed roof. They would cover it and just lay apricots all over the shed roof and dehydrate in the sun. And if that were me, I would do that, but I would also cover it with something to keep bugs off because you don't want bugs landing on your food and laying eggs because they will hatch later in containers. But it won't hurt anything because uh, the larvae just die. So um, outdoor, there are outdoor dehydrators. There are on the internet, there are a lot of plans for different dehydrators that you can move around to the sun and um, make. <clears throat> there's greenhouse you can dehydrate in your greenhouse and that um, I think is a very good place because you would ha be able to keep the bugs out and have as much food as you could stack in there as long as there was airflow and then there's hang drying this is a way to hang corn. Now I just did a small amount of corn. And every, my friend also said that they used to dry corn in their, I think she said their attic. And they would just tie it up to a, a string. Well, tying it is kind of a pain. I just had some rubber bands and I wrote, put rubber bands on and they hold the corn perfectly because tying them 
and I did tie the last two on here, they would break and um, as they dried, they would untie and fall off. Now how you would do this corn is you would remove it from the cob now that it's dry, and this just air dries. You don't have to hang it outside. I just hung this in my um, dining room. So you would take it off the cob, and then I would store it. When I went to go to use it, I would wash it because it's been in the open air and it could have dust. So when you rehydrate it, you wash, you just um, rinse it in some water as you're rehydrating it, dump the water and then fill the water up again. And then you would have corn. You could also use the husks as fire starters. You can light them. And another air drying technique is used for herbs. And I did some herbs. This is mint. I just grabbed the mint. Normally I pull the mint off the stalks and then put a rubber band around the stalks, but I was in such a hurry. I just put it around the mint leaves. Both work very well. This is a wild um, flower that is out in my um, uh, pasture and it, it has medicinal properties. And I did the same thing with that. I just rubber band it and dried it in my dining room. And then now I can take it, take everything off, put it into jars, and I have um, hot drink and medicine. So with jars, save all your jars. This is a pickle jar and it washes up nicely. This smells a little bit like pickles, but that's okay. I usually put on the pickle jars, I put it dog food in it, but, um, and she doesn't seem to mind. It doesn't uh, make the food taste like pickles or anything, but save your jars because these are nice containers and they're free. Actually, you pay for them. You, when you buy the food, you pay for the jar also, the packaging. So you have paid for this. Use it. These are, what I mentioned earlier, meals in jars. You have your recipes that tell you what's in them. And this is a curried rice, a jar of curried rice. And you have, um, you can write on the lid. It, if it's simple instructions, you write on the lid. And, or you have a piece of paper with the instructions on it on how to put this together. I have that one. And then this is an Italian lentil soup. Dates on it that it was made. Everything is in there to make a pot of soup. So when I say to take the pressure off you if it, there is a, a disaster, I mean it. it. It's really not a hard thing to do. Now if you, um, this is a vegan chicken broth. It's, you can make your own. Anything that you can buy, there's a recipe to make it. Um, so you can make pretty much everything. You just go online and you look for recipes or a lot of times they've been handed down and you can use those. So I'm going to talk about two, I have two different ways. This is comfrey in here. The green stuff is comfrey. The um, kind of greeny yellow stuff that is um, coconut oil, but it was very cold in my car and so it's solid. But normally when this is, when it's at um, a warm temperature, it's a liquid. And that is filled with dehydrated comfrey. Comfrey is a medicinal herb and I have it in two forms. I've dehydrated it to use as a poultice, and then I dehydrated it and used it as a, um, what is it, a balm. And this can be, I have used it and it works very well. So if you're interested in comfrey, look it up and start growing some, especially if you're doing homestead, a homestead and you have um, animals, they, thrive on comfrey. 
and it once you plant it you've got it and its um, medicinal properties are very very good it's um it's uh what is it it's also called bone knit so another way to dehydrate off-grid is using a wood stove. Now this is one of the easier ways to dehydrate, especially in our climate, we have very moist air. There's a lot of rain. And so it's harder to dehydrate when you have humidity because you, you were trying to remove moisture out of the food or the product that you're dehydrating. Well, if you have a very humid, room it it takes longer it's harder so when you're dehydrating with a wood stove the room is usually dry you have to put moisture back into a room but with dehydrating you don't want to do that so when i dehydrate off grid i have a rack that i put onto the stove and let me just remove some things. I put it on the stove and then I put something on top. This is an old pizza pan that I got from a thrift store and it has holes in it so it's perfect for airflow. I use the uh, rack so that air can go around the, um, the uh, item that I'm dehydrating or the food and this works wonderfully. It, I don't even have to have it that high. It's just a cake cooling rack, and I have three of them, and they do stack. So that it makes uh, life a little bit easier when I have a lot to dehydrate. And so anytime that you can get a setup like this uh, on your wood stove, around your wood stove, you can do it on the sides because it's not as hot as if it were on top but you're not cooking the food, you're just removing the moisture. You're trying to dehydrate it. So that's why you need airflow. And when you put food on something like this on the sides of your stove, it's still warm and it will pull the moisture out and dry it. If you have a stove that you can get underneath the stove with um, a rack and a pan, it's warm under there also. So you have the entire way around the stove to dehydrate. You can also use folding racks that you would use for uh, laundry, drying laundry by your wood stove, and you can hang herbs. I can put trays on my drying rack because that's the way they fold out. And I use that in front of my stove and um, it works very well. So that is off-grid dehydration. It's not a hard thing to do. If I had to do it now, I have practiced enough that I could do it and it wouldn't even phase me. It would just be like normal because I incorporate all this into my um, food preparation. And this isn't even long-term storage. This is just what I use in my everyday cooking and how I do things. If um, large amounts of food comes on sale, I'm able to put it away to use throughout the month or the weeks. And um, it saves a lot on the budget. To be aware of new videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to the Preparing for the Time of Trouble channel. For more free videos and downloadable audio podcasts, as well as handouts, go to www.preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com. Topic categories include recordings of live seminar presentations, country living, sustainable gardening, Homestead Remedies, How to Be Self-Sufficient When the Grid Goes Down, Wild Edible and Medicinal Plants, Hydrotherapy, and End Time Bible Prophecies. To take advantage of these free resources, go to preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com.